You know, we love looking at those letters. Mm -hmm. We love looking at those top to bottoms. We love looking at those whole cars. We love looking at those window downs. We just loved the flavor. We loved Bode. We, you know, we mm. love those characters and letters. We love those TikToks. We love those mm. fat caps. We love those letters. We love those 3Ds. We love those bubbles and stars. We love it all. Mm. You know what I mean? And uh, we love the we love the sparkles and the shines that's going to go on, the on on your letters at the end. We love it all. And I think um, you, you, just like with hip hop music, you had to become graffiti before you started to pick up that spray can. <laughs> KellerKellerOfficial.com You need the Kellervision app. 24-7 mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top five, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the App Store for free today. Instagram UK Frontline. Beatbox created. Killer Keller. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller podcast. Yes, yes, ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller podcast in effect. We are in centre of Birmingham, Digbeth as it may be, um, on a Friday night. Uh, well, it's just kicking off by, by the sounds behind us. That's how we like it. Energy crew, hold tight. Big shout out to graffitikings.co.uk. Um, for your sins, you check out the Kellervision app. For your download iPhone and Android. Be street culture in all forms, sport and art, you know how we do it. And inside the place, inside the place, we have a legend. Ooh. Oh yeah, oh yeah. If you know about the graffiti scene and the hip hop culture over here in Birmingham, then without question, FKS man's T-bone inside the place. Salute, man. How you know are you? Mean? Yo, I'm great now that you're here, my brother. <laughs> <laughs> Part two. Part two. Yeah, you don't even lie. know about that. Yeah, yeah. yeah we're not gonna lie. We did try and get this one sorted last time, but with the, we had some technical difficulties. Um, bearing in mind the time of the day and the situation, I yeah, mean, it was pretty yeah. COVID lockdown central, wasn't it at the time? Man, it was ridiculous. You know what I mean? But shout out to the Killer Keller. Make sure you get that app. You know what I mean? Download the app. Get that content. Support this brother, man. You know what I'm saying? Because the realness is the realness. Yeah. And you know what? If you're real and you're real, and you know what's going down, then when you connect, it's going to make sense, man. So that's <laughs> yeah. how we do it out here anyway. You've real. always been an ambassador for the culture. Without question, like, and style was it, everything back in the day. So in, inherently, you've, you've developed and refined your style throughout a very long... I mean, I remember coming down here in Birmingham back in the day doing shows and you would be there. You know what I mean? No doubt. You know what I mean? No like doubt. We're, talking, we're talking back in them times, you know? Back in the days, man, I mean, look, the music and the art have always, they've always lived together, man. And um, this is where we've, this is where you could find us, you know what I mean? And it's all good. It was one of those things where we didn't need prompting, man. You know, you were just there. If you weren't there, you missed out. You know, if you, if you weren't there, somebody told you about it, you know what I mean? And, mm -hmm. But we were there. And I give thanks for that, man, because we were hungry. You know, we, we, we wanted that realness. Um, and it didn't feel alien, you know, it didn't feel like we shouldn't be there, you know what I mean? It felt like it belonged to us, so... Mm. Youthful that's... curiosity, wasn't it? Youthful curiosity. Mad man. drive mm. for no other reason. I've heard people <laughs> even say in recent times, oh, misspent youth. I was like, I'm mm. telling you something now. <laughs> I didn't miss, I didn't misspend anything, man, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> he, did, he didn't, he spent well. <laughs> I spent well, in fact, I'm cashing in now. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Well, let's get into it. I mean, you know, FKS, I mean, do you come from this pedi... I mean, Zuki, Corsa. I mean, I, I mean, last time I was here, you guys were in a photo and it blew my mind. I was like, yeah, oh, they're all in a photo together. <laughs> you know, these are, these, are, um, these are teaching times for a scene that was burgeoning in the 90s. It was, it was boom bap hip hop. It was, yeah. it was Birmingham's... I just always relate Birmingham to this golden era more so than any other. I think it's because I was touring. I, th I just used to come in and just be so ready to be schooled. There was, a, there was a high echelon of attitude and... Oh, man. You know? They say if you could crack a Birmingham crowd, right, then you, you know what I mean? You really <laughs> are something because there's, there's so many people here that were like, yo, I can do that, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, you jump up on the stage if you're not hardcore. If you weren't hardcore enough, yeah. you know what I mean? You, you know, you're not cracking the crowd, but Birmingham had a, a reputation of having a very tough crowd yeah. in those days anyway, yeah. you know, but um, 
some real legends come out of this place. Um, Throw some names. Get, get some, let's go back there. Throw oh some man. names that come into. Oh man! I mean, look, if we if we're going back into the the, the early hip hop scene, especially where we, especially where where I'm coming from, um, you know, you got Brick House, you got you know uh, Napalm X, you know, you got Detro. Now these guys, Detro, Detro Napalm X became what we know as MSI Asylum. Asylum. Wow. So we yeah. know how serious that is. Then we got we got Pen Talk, we got Sidewalk Knowledge, mm. we got Moorish Delta. Moorish you know, Delta. We, we, Pen we, Talk. Yo, <laughs> we got we got too many to name. You know, if we're if we're talking about that. And then as individual artists, there's a lot of quality. Uh, there's a lot of individual skill um, because most geezers are kind of loners in a way because they, they feel like they have to battle everything to get to a point where they're seen and noticed. You know what I mean? So the hunger would extend in a different way. It show people that we ain't playing around. So every man that you see has got more than one skill set, you know what I mean? The diversity of style and the diversity of hunger and the, just the ability to win, as it were, mm. was always top echelon, you know what I mean? Because geezers were not giving you a chance. If you weren't good enough, man. Get out. You're gone, man. You're Shit. Gone. You're gone I'm real quick, real Get quick. <laughs> It's true, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Uh, and also, I, I do like that. It's, it's, people narrowed it down to the kind of jack of trades shit, but I'm like, no, because hip hop is one trade. That's the way I saw it. I was like, yeah. hip hop's one trade. Yeah. It's like it's a belief system. It's like, it's, like owning, uh, it's like owning a shop and not knowing the difference between f fruit and veg. <laughs> Can I'm saying? For real, man. It's, I mean, I, I gotta say, you gotta, you gotta be in a, you gotta be in a place where, if you're serious about this music, you gotta be in a place where you become the music, you know. And I say that to say, uh, if you don't love it enough, then it's not gonna matter to you. Mm -hmm. And if you, if you don't, if you don't love it that much and it doesn't matter to you, you shouldn't be doing it. Mm -hmm. That's just me saying that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that people can't dabble and be expressive, and but I'm talking about if you're that serious about it, you're gonna want to do it. Somebody mm. said that the other day. I was watching. Um, what was I watching? I was watching something with a. Um, who said it now? It was Most Def. <laughs> most Def said that. Yeah, Most Def says yeah. Most people that are creative. Most people that are creative, if they're serious about it, they're gonna want to do that creative thing. You know, yeah. they're gonna want to do it if they're that serious about it and they love it. In fact, he wasn't talking about being creative, he was talking about music, he was talking about people that love music. He mm. said, people that love music are going to want to try and make it one day, in whatever way, shape or form that is. If you love music, really love music like that, then you're going to want to try and make it. Kind of by hook or by crook kind of shit. By hook or by crook. And I've been there, you know what I'm saying? Because I was so hungry to put some verses down after I did a few initial projects with, uh, in fact, uh, in fact, I would say my first official track was with uh, HMD uh, at, from MSI and Asylum. Wow. What, uh, what I actually did was, um, it was a guy called Dean Anthony, um, and, and he used to, he used to, be, he used to uh, work in one of the studios um, over by towards Five Ways. So long story short, I did an album cover for him, some graph and stuff like that, yeah. And he goes, look, I can't, you know, dough, but I can pay you with some studio time. I was like, hell, oh. hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you read my down? Oh, I was like, Bro. so, um, you know, I found this old break um, and I had a couple of things. I'm, anyway, I ended up doing a track. Because this might be a bit noisy. It is a bit noisy. Yeah, we're, getting, we're, getting, we're getting into the evening There's interference shift, out man. here, man. But you know we like I mean? it. We like it. It's a vibe, isn't it? Oh, as no, well, we sorry, love, we love a vibe yeah, or two. Yeah, as was, as was. Yeah, so I found this old break. Long story short, Dean put the, the track together. I wrote this tr uh, track called uh, Rap Mecca, you know, and that was really my homage to uh, actually knowing where you're coming from first mm. before you pick up that microphone or that spray can or whatever it is mm. in hip hop culture. Mm. Um, and then I was graced by, by the presence of HMD, MSI Asylum at the time, who, mm. who did, um, did a couple of verses on there. Um, yeah, man, and it, wow. it, that, that, that kind of really that lit, the, that, that lit the fire, you know what I'm saying? Like that lit, the, that lit the musical fire. And then from there, I was trying to buy computers and trying to make beats and mm. except, you know, the, the first ones were like Casio, mm. ting, ting, ting business. But you know, I always had a groove 
and then the next thing you know, uh, you know, I met with, uh, I met up with um, people like Major. God rest his soul. You know what I mean? Rest in peace, Major. Mm-hmm. Rest in peace, Vomit Major. Vomit Recordings. The original Pato Banton's brother there. Um, one of the precursors in terms of studio engineers in Birmingham. One of the best to ever do, do it. Yeah. Wow, wow, wow. As well as being an artist. Anyway, mm-hmm. I was always involved with, with Pato Banton and, and Major in some way because I knew I did graffiti, so I do art projects. Mm. I do things for their studios. I do things for their youth projects, and um, so then Major would then boom. I brought my computer to him. He put some put Logic on there, blah blah blah, and I'd be trying to make music, get keyboards, MIDI keyboards, this that and the third, samples, chopping stuff up, using Fatmatic, you know some of the old stuff. You know, Fatmatic is almost like, almost like MP but digital. Mm-hmm. You put your stuff in, chop it up, play it through your keyboards, MIDI. Uh, and then there you go, you're gone. You're you know right, what I mean? yeah. So that was kind of the first taster, you know. Um, How old were you at that point? It's a good question, man. Uh, that's, that was probably, I was probably doing that around musically. The, fir- the, the first bit of music was 98. Okay. I'd been writing for like 10 years before that, just right. writing. I just right. had a rap folder, which was like this, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. full of verses. But I never really touched a mic till about 98 with that rap maker track. And then 20, 2001, I think I really started to put music together. And then 2003, when I met my, my partner, Pythagoras, uh, and he invited me to become part of the collective Children of the Last Days here in Brum. It was a rap, you know what I'm saying? It was an absolute rap. Mm-hmm. We did it. The first track we did was called um, Double Helix, and it was just ridiculous. I think we did something like, well, I think it may be 42 bars a piece. Wow. Uh, what? Ridiculous. <laughs> which, just... is, yo, which reminds me, have you checked the new k at the moment? No, I haven't, you know. Bro, the, the new k is insane. He's got like 110 um, MC, MCs in it. Oh, it's shit. a 40-minute fucking track. It's bonkers. <laughs> I'm going to check that out, man. Yeah, That's yeah. crazy. The new case I mixtape. Yeah. yeah. I, and I know you would appreciate this. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 the yeah. bars are crazy. The bars. The bars, <laughs> man. The bars. <laughs> yeah, when you get into a flow state with l- l- lyrics and writing and things like that, it becomes infectious, doesn't it? Yeah, um, there's something about how that affects the, the brain. You know what I mean? Because it's, it's, a, it's a flow of energy. Mm. So it's not just a... When you understand what the flow of energy does to the brain, to the mind, especially when you're, when you're generating that energy. Um, so I'm distracted by G-Thing right now. I know, we're getting into uh, it. I, mean, I don't know if I can hear it on there, but you know... The low riders out there. Yeah, no. yeah, that's right, you know. So it, it, when you get into that, that frame of mind, that flow, it produces chemicals that you can't believe. Mm. And that really then provides fuel for you to uh, continue continue that song. So, you know, you start at a particular point, you generate that energy, it then fuels you to con- continue that song, which, which sounds crazy. So mm. really you have to be in forward motion yeah. at that point to make that music work, to make that song work, to make that flow work, you know, and it's a process because you gotta, you gotta start it, you gotta have a middle and you gotta have an ending. But you've, but you've almost got to see it in reverse and be holistic at the same time. That's, that's interesting it. you say that because um, graffiti is the same. Think about what you just said there. Graffiti is the same thing. There's a beginning, middle and end. Yeah. But it, it's almost like that sweet spot in the middle when you're doing the fills and stuff like that. See, I'm, I'm acting like I know. I mean, I'm just getting <laughs> into this shit. But the truth be told is like you've got to commit to that energy to execute the hardest bit is the, the outline that by far needs all the energy you can muster yeah yeah that's real man because that's what brings everything together and I would say your final verse brings the whole track together because really you're not just I mean one of my one of my gripes is people that make music or rap but they're not listening to the music they're just listening to, they're just rapping. Now, okay, mm. you can rap all day long, 
but if you're not really listening to the energy of the music, you're off. Mm. You know what I mean? And then you're not complimenting the track, and you're not comp- you're not giving yourself you're doing yourself a disservice. Do you think that's a that's that's a trait that exists through just lack of lack of um, experience? It's, it's you know something. There's two things there. There's lack of experience, which you can't blame a kid for. And then there's people that do it willingly to say, this is so easy for me that I don't really have to try. Yeah. Now, that's their prerogative, you know what I mean? But to me, it makes you look like a nana. You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> you're, you're trying to show everybody that you, you, your particular thing or a way of, you, you know, you've got a particular way yeah. of doing something. And it's so easy that you don't have to try, you know. Yeah. And then you're saying that you're the best. With, which adds a layer of ignorance to the fact Bingo. that you actually aren't holding court in your own creative skill set. Correct. Yeah. So... You know who... I t- can I just add value to this? When mm. I think of what we're just talking about now, you know who I think of, right, that fits in the pocket so well at the moment, shines remarkably, and for their age, ages... But more so, Connie, um, Children of Zeus. Yeah. They've developed their sound. Connie is like, he's had years and years, and now he just fits mm. in the pocket of his own music that they're creating. As an MC, I'm just like, yo, you, you've matured. Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, man. Yeah, man. I mean, look, Children of Zeus is dope. You know, the vocals and then the, the maturity to add, you know... Uh, the wisdom to mm. know where to add those rap vocals, and, and you know, and where they, where they're placed within that track. You know, it's genius, and then the and then the, and then the music that sits around it just hugs everything. You know what I mean? Mm. So there's a lot. Of, you know, I got a lot of respect for them. Still, you mm. know what I mean? Um, Many years. Uh, they've been yeah, they've been around for a long time. The mouse outfit. I mean, mm. there's ge- there's loads of geezers that are doing their thing. Mm. Um, my one of my major gripes, I think, really and truly, was when Westwood first signed to um, Def Jam, mm. right? And um, around that time, Westwood had all the UK artists coming on every week and things like that. And um, I remember the, the MSI episode; it was crazy. Excuse me, the MSI episode, which was like, wow. You know so I mean? they were in the studio. I they were do in the recall studio. this, yeah. Yeah, and they took over the, the whole thing and it was just crazy. Anyway, from that point, um, sh- I think it was shortly after, you know, we got the news, yo, Westwood site, yo, Westwood site to Def Jam. Oh my God, now we can take it to the States. Yeah. We can show the American cats, you know, that we've, you know, we can do something. We, you know, we, we've got music. He's we, a gateway to, to bigger opportunities. Yeah. Right. So we were like, yeah, man, okay, it's going down. And then, um, the Westwood, then he announced that the album's coming out. So I'm like, yes. Yeah, yeah. As soon as the album came out, I was in Tower Records, I think, or I was in, I might have even been at one of the listening pods in HMV. And I was like, yeah, let's, you know, let's see what's going on. Bruv, when I looked at the back of the album cover, it was just pure US artists. Mm. Now, I weren't hating, I say hating loosely. I, weren't, I didn't have a problem with that necessarily. I just had a problem with the fact that I felt that the opportunity for the UK as very, very talented hip hop artists, very talented, was just gone. Just gone, you know mm. what I'm saying? And I was devastated. Yeah. A lot of other people were too, because they were like, I thought that mm. Westwood was. So a lot of, ge- a lot of geezers were like, you know what, Westwood's a nana. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because we thought that this was what was going to go down. Yeah. You know what I mean? We thought that this is what was going to happen. We thought that there was an opportunity. We thought blah, blah, blah. Anyway, mm. it is what it is. You know what I mean? It is what it is. So these you know. uh, these chapters in British culture, uh, there was this. There certainly was a time where it felt where those opportunities were being taken away. The cottage industry in us, we kind of went back to the roots. Yeah, and that kind of forged a new type of attack on the cre- creativity. People like, people like Task Force were emerging. People like Jest. And um, although you still had the Rodney Pease and the MSI Asylums and yeah. this stuff, it just yeah. felt like there was a call to... It felt like a call to fucking arms. It really was. 
You know what I mean? He really was Ty, God rest his soul. Yeah, big, big shout out to You know Ty, what I mean? Sure. Big shout out to the brother Ty. Look, I've got to say that the UK then became almost like closed doors. You yeah. know what I mean? Because we were like, okay, you're not taking us seriously. I mean, you had, you had geezers like Mr. 4 5. Yeah. Yeah, you got yeah. geezers like Scorsese. Yeah. Oh you got my God. geezers like Furious. Yes. These are the geezers that we were around. We got our very own Rav, who was signed to be a mountain, De, De La Soul. Mm. You know mm. what I mean? It was like, boom. We had we got artillery, mm. but if you're not going to give us an up, the, the platform to show that we're serious, then how are you going to believe in it? But then there was the other thing, which was, we got a million rappers out there anyway. We don't care about what you're doing. Mm. You know what I'm saying? There so, is, and it's this just, but, but, but you, we created our own scene. But hold up, hold up. Before you, I'm not even cutting you. I was like, okay, even if you got a million rappers out there and you don't care about what we're doing, that's fine. Mm. But at least give us the platform. I'm not saying America, but I'm just saying UK. The industry. The yeah. industry. At least give us the platform to showcase, I mean, really showcase what we are doing. Mm. I learned that I was in France and um, I was looking on the back of, um, I, bought, I bought Akhenaten's album at the time. And I was just looking at the production credits because it had, you know, it was real glossy and real nice mm. the inlay. You know, you're always reading the tracks and the producers and all these things. And I was looking, and I think it was produced at Electric Lady Studios. Oh shit! Right? And I was like, and then I got to real, then I got to find out that at the time, and I don't, I'm not sure if it's still happening, but Frank, the the, fr the French industry was obligated to play uh, forty percent. That's Home, right. Homegrown. It's the same with Canada. Right. Yeah. So 40% homegrown talent. Yeah. So that's going to give geezers a platform yeah. to be creative. So why haven't we got that in the UK? Why haven't we got that? That's uh, the biggest question. That's the question, baby. Yeah. Hold up. This is like news. At that's the question, baby. I'm not Trevor McDonald's, yeah. but this is <laughs> the question, baby. Yeah. Why has the UK industry not supported yeah. real hip hop music? Yeah. You see, you got to understand why this is so important because... There are, there are young men and women out there, supremely talented, you know, with, uh, with, dy you know, with dynamic energy about mm. them. This is what it's really all about. It's about dynamic energy. They have that about them, right? Mm. If they're not able to express that energy, right, creatively, creatively mm. then where's that energy going to go? And I kid you not, if you are saying to people that this door's closed all the time, then they're going to think there's no way to go through that door mm. unless they kick it down like how Wu-Tang did mm. but I'm just saying uh, there's got to be a, there's got to be a way forward creatively and you, I hate the, old, the, the whole ideology of well you know this is what young black men and women do or young black teens or mm. young black people or young people mm. in general you know within a subculture this is all they do you know yeah. they're violent you know, you know they do this they do that yeah. and I'm like that's that's some BS right there mm. because that's not what it is at all. Mm. You know what I mean? You, you, you got people that want education. You got people that, if they are given the tools, like Farrakhan and yes. and uh, you know Malcolm X have, have said, uh, if you give these people the tools, then they can develop and move forward in the correct fashion. That's right. And unfortunately, that is not promoted. You know what I mean? I hear so much bullshit mm. come out on the radio. You know, because I still listen to some things. I hear so much bullshit come out on the radio and I'm, I'm thinking to myself, this is, uh, you're wasting my time. Mm. You know what I mean? Because mm. The, mm. the energy may be this and it, you know, you might be saying this and you might be saying that. But what is it really, what are you really saying? Mm. You're not saying anything. You know what I mean? And we're too old now to be hearing people saying nothing. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. The people need help. Yeah. Society needs help. We can help because we're in between the lines all the time. Because that's where I live. On that front line. Right. I live between the lines. Mm. I live on the front line. I live between the lines. So we can help you to understand what's going on with your life. We can, we can, because this Be is what hip-hop's about. Yeah. This is what hip-hop's about. Hip-hop, yeah. what's hip-hop about? Community. Hip-hop's about teaching. Hip-hop's mm. about your fellow community person. Hip-hop's about looking out for somebody that could be, that may require education. That's mm. what Bambata and them geezers were doing. You know what I mean? Mm. You know, that's the mantle. That's what Keir Swan's talking about. Mm. You know what I mean? That's what Rakem Allah was talking about. He's trying, to, he's trying to motivate you to be the best version of yourself. Mm. You know, and some of, those, some of those verses from Rakem Allah. Yeah. The Focus. beast. 
right? The beast. The beast. The only one beast. The only one beast. You know, don't get me wrong, you know, I love Kane and I love all PE. Lo but I'm saying that the, there's a, a level that Rakim went to that transcended the, the thoughts of the day. Yeah. The did. teaching was so deep. The mentality behind it was so uh, advanced. Yeah. yeah? It, it, was taking, it was taking people's mentality to a new level of, of thought. It wasn't just about gangster rhymes. It wasn't mm. just about, it was about subject matter that was pushing the... the, the self-assured verse. Everyone was self-assured. Just the, the knowledge and depth and... The depth. You, yeah, you could listen to it over and over again. You discover we still something do. new. You was, yeah, exactly. The rhyme schemes were ridiculous. You know, the internal rhymes, the exterior rhymes, the patterns, the... Not matched uh, by anything at nah, the moment. No. Nah. I'm trying to, I mean, of course, comment below, you know. And also, <laughs> actually, moving on to, to another chapter, actually, actually, while we're at, because I feel it's a good segue to, to delve into this. Of course, let's do it. Um, so, you mentioned Karis one there, you mentioned, I mean, I, in fact, I'll, I'll run them off. Fat Joe, Master Ace, Karis one um... Uh, MF Doom. These are these are um, these are characters that play in the field of music, but are very well versed and educated in street art graffiti. You, my friend, to a lot of people out there, will almost certainly have a connection with you in as much as your graffiti, your street art, and the edge you have in your mu and the passion you have in your music. Let's let's talk about that. Um, Co combination with you as a person um, because the gate like I said the gateway to a lot of people is T-Bone the graph writer yeah um, they obviously know there's their substance behind it but how did that relationship how did that how did that pairing of graph and you because and also going back to the call to arms like I remember the mid 90s Corsa he to me he represented Birmingham to the fullest like he would come to London and he was hip hop he no was doubt. fucking hip hop. No doubt. Like shout, he, shout out to the man Corsa right there. For real. Yeah. And he was a, like a beacon coming into the ca capital and telling people this is how Birmingham do it. Talk to me about your experience. Yeah, man. Um, Talk to me about your experience in graph and how that, how that was forged. I, th I feel like I had this, there was a point in time where I was at uni at the time. <laughs> I was doing industrial design and. Um, As one would. You, you know what I'm saying? Because you know, you, know, you know we do that. Yeah. And um, as I'm doing um, product styling, baby, um, I'm, I'm really reaching into the hip-hop at the same time as the graffiti, at the same time as the, um, the industrial design, right? And the industrial design helped me, really, uh, in a big way in terms of, you know, scale and focus and, and things like that while painting. But then I had this struggle. The struggle was, I can't do all three. I'm sure, no, I can't do all three. I'm, str I'm struggling. And I got to this point where I was like, whoa, 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 hang on a minute. They're all the same. That was the light bulb moment. The light bulb moment was... As, in like, as in like DNA discipline, like what you're... DNA all... discipline, they, they are all the same. You just have to apply the same rules uh, to each one of those disciplines, you know, and, and keep them maintained. Well, did you always write T-Bone? I've got a plethora of... Other, which other we don't want names, to discuss. You know I mean? there, there's discuss. some other names out yeah. there. You know what I mean? The kid used to write a few yeah. other names, but um, um, how did it all begin? How did your graph journey begin? Oh, oh man! So this is how it kicked off. We used to, um, we as kids, I'm, I'm talking like maybe 12, 11, 12. Um, in fact, it may have been a little bit sooner when I was looking at the. Um, the um, the electro albums and uh, you know some of the other things that my uncle was introducing me to, introducing me to at the time. So it was your uncle that was introducing so you my, to the my uncle culture. introduced me to culture, hip hop right. culture. One of the first albums or one of the first groups he introduced me to was UTFO. Oh whoa! You know what I mean, dude, there's a name. Wow, fucking hell! Untouchable Force yeah. Organization, baby. Wow. Lakim Shabazz, mm -hmm. UTFO, uh, LL Cool J, right? The first album that my, my uncle introduced me to of Cool J's was uh, Bigger and Deffer, mm. right? Um, I knew the album Back to Front. All the UTFO albums, I knew them Back to Front. Um, 
So at that point, I was like, wow, you know what I mean? And then um, in Hansworth at the time, there was a, a, a big um, leisure center in the, in the park and Rocksteady crew came there, right? For, to do, uh, I can't remember who they, were, who they were battling, you know what I'm saying? I can't remember, but it was Rocksteady crew. And I was like, oh my God. But we were kids, we never had no dough. But somebody um, inside, they left the, the fire escape on the top of the spiral stairs open just long enough for us to, about six or seven of us to just fly inside. And we got into the balcony and the big, the big circle was in the middle there. And we could just look over and just see like crazy legs. We could just see some windmills. We, could, we couldn't even see properly, but we knew it was, you know, we knew it was Rocksteady Crew. And that, it was like, it was crazy. Then my cousin at the time, Drastic, rest in peace. Um, he was into graffiti, but I didn't really, it didn't really kick off. But the graffiti side didn't really kick off with him then. Where it kicked off was this. Me and uh, a dude called Andrew, uh, he used to live up the road, man. We used to, and we used to, as kids, we would just jump on our bikes. Just a little bit, there you go, there you go. Yeah, we'd just jump on our bikes and we'd go down to this uh, canal. Mm. I later found out the place was called Crime Time Canal. Oh yeah. my God. <laughs> oh my God. Crime Time Canal, baby. If you know, you know. You know. Right? Mm. So we got down to Crime Time and the walls were painted up hardcore and we would just sit on the railway bridge it's all blocked off now but we'd sit on the railway bridge and we'd just look at all the pieces first of all we'd walk up and up, 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 up and down the canal tracking having a look at these pieces and we'd be like oh shit and we used, we used to try and get there at times to catch graffiti artists because uh, at that time some pieces would disappear and we're like shit that's changed yeah oh my god yeah so you had geezers like uh, Corvette L Scram, TCS, you had AME, Art Made Easy, DSR, USK, United Street Federation, um, USF, United Street Federation. You had, um, I mean, there's so many crews, I can't even remember the names now, but so many people, man. It was crazy. And um, so after, after looking at these paintings all the time and, and sort of going back home and doing little doodles and stuff like that, nothing really happened, right? Until we saw the Goldie paintings up and down the, on, the, on the billboards, but painted on the, the billboards, right? Pink Lady was the, uh, the thing that Goldie was doing at the time. That was the promotion. So he was doing the, these like sort of champagne bottles of Pink Lady that were popping in the middle of these uh, billboards with, the, with the, the, the graph around it. We were like, oh shit, oh shit. Like just seeing them on random billboards. And I was like, oh my God, this is crazy. So. One day, I was going back to Andrew's house and he goes, yo, my brother's got this book. He says, what book, bruv? Giza pulled out Subway Art, man, mm. right? That was it, man. You know what I mean? I was like, what? I says, let me borrow that. So anyway, I got a little borrow off. His brother didn't really want no one to have it oh, and yeah. blah, blah, blah. Anyway, I got hold of it. I was like, oh my God. I was dead. I was like, oh my, what is this? What is this? You know? Shout out to Henry Chalfant. Shout, shout out to Martha Cooper, you know what I'm saying? Right? Um, uh, that was just crazy. The paperwork came out. The, pen, the, the crayons, the pen, it, it all came out. We were going crazy. But I never touched a spray can, man. Why? Right? Just didn't have, I just didn't do it. I did a few little things in my back garden, but mm. I didn't actually go out there and do it. Right? It's the first time I did it, really did it even though I'd been into it for so many years, was about 93, right? 93? Yeah. Yeah, see, and it fell in line with my timeline. That's what I'm <laughs> saying, see? Okay, carry on. <laughs> so what happened was, um, um, I was talking to Cries. Shout out to Cries. Shout out to Cries. Blueprint, uh, Blueprint Gallery. Um, Juice. Juice, uh, Juice 186 Juice 186 um, so shout out to them guys there because they were you know they ran the pressure paint festivals up here in Birmingham every year faithfully bringing artists from all over the world it was crazy shout out to Mo2 mm. shout out to Future 2000 there was geezers like John 1 from New York right there we had uh, Darko Stormboy Australia Gore Paris it was ridiculous anyway um First time I really got into it was when uh, Christ says, yo, don't you know Corsa? And I was like, 
Corsa. Who's that? Because look, man, I'm gonna introduce you. And then we were at the park at the time. And then who bops into the park like this? <laughs> yeah, what are you saying? With his uh, with his grimy self. It was the man Corsa. And that was it, man. You know what I mean? We went on missions. You know what I mean? We did some things. We were out after dark. It was good times. You know what I mean? That was the start of the that was the start of the journey. Right there. That was the start of the journey. Did it did he because I've had stories, so many stories of Corsa, but you're you were most certainly you were it was almost like you plugged into Corsa. <laughs> <laughs> he's a he's a, he's a beast. The guy you you couldn't help but be influenced by his energy because uh, he had such a hunger and a, such a love for the art form. You had to just res you had to just respond in whatever way you could because that was what it was all about. You know what I mean? Um, and I loved it. You know what I mean? I loved the music. I loved the art. I loved the flavor. You know, we love looking at those trains. We lo you know, we love looking at those letters. Mm -hmm. We love looking at those top to bottoms. We love looking at those whole cars. We love looking at those window downs. We just loved the flavor. We loved Baudet. We, you know, we mm. love those characters and letters. We love those TikToks. We love those mm. fat caps. We love those letters. We love those 3Ds. We love those bubbles and stars. We love it all. Mm. You know what I mean? And uh, we, love the, we love the sparkles and the shines that's going to go on, the top, on, on your letters at the end. We love it all. And I think um, you, you, just like with hip-hop music, you had to become graffiti before you started to pick up that spray can. Fact, you, you, had, had to, you embody anything creative that you do. It has to embody you first, where you chase it to want to be it, to the point that you, you run full circle into your own ghost and you are it. Yeah. Whoa! I'm telling you, it's so real. You know, and when you realise that you're staring back at yourself. Yeah. And you know that you have to be in movement, then it all makes sense. Going back to the movement again. It's all about movement. But then, love is about movement. Mm. And if you realise that love doesn't stand still, uh, you realise that you have to be responsive. Because that's what love is. Love is about being able to respond, you know what I mean, to something. Graf, um, feeling, graf, uh, graf, graf here is, is, is adored. I think that's the... That's the key to Birmingham is um, the, the old, the old, um, the, 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 the pamphlet that you guys are reading from is age old and the methods and that you practice is of the same. Yeah. You know, there's no, there's no removal of the, the thing from the other thing. It's like, no, this is, this is how we do it. This is the blueprint. You said, you said the right thing there, the blueprint. You see, when you look at the rule book of graffiti or you look at the essence of graffiti and what it's trying to do, it's ultimately trying to communicate something, style, love, passion, yeah. you know, bubbles, stars, characters, letters, crispness, mm. progression, you know what I mean? It's trying, to, it's trying to communicate all those things at once, you know, to show that I've actually moved from point A to point K mm. and from point killer to point, you know what I mean? <laughs> right? So... Point K to point T, come yeah. on. <laughs> but that's for real though, isn't it? Because... It's about movement. It's about movement. Um, and there's a constant... Graph to me is like the most rawest version of creativity, particularly in, in the, hip, the culture it comes from hip hop. It feels like um, you can learn every single marketing. You could be a marketing expert just by knowing the mind of a graph writer. And a lot of marketing people don't realise it. <laughs> well, it's funny you said that because that's a really important point because, you know, in the 80s in New York City, there was a tussle between graffiti artists and corporate uh, businesses that were looking at graffiti art and the way, the way the iconography was being shown and using those ideas for packaging and products because it was eye-catching. Which fucking happened, without right. question. Right, so... Especially in candy bars and shit like that. Precisely. You look at, you look at a dime bar right now, mm. or you look at a Snickers bar right now. Picnic bar, those sorts of shit. Picnic bars. And I'm like, I look at the back, I look at those uh, images, and I'm like, yo, look at the 3D on that, man. <laughs> Real. <laughs> Phil's ill. Yeah. You know what I mean? So we know that these geezers have been borrowing 
because they know it's eye catching. Yeah. We know that we created something for people to say, wow, you know what I mean? This is liberating. Mm. Have you ever seen somebody? I've seen it. Have you ever seen somebody that doesn't really understand what graffiti may be about, but is standing in front of a piece that's incredible? Mm. Watch what it does to their body. It's Watch true. what it does to their mind. Watch what it does to their... Uh, they almost want to move. What's the dating app? What's that one called? <laughs> um, I forget the name of it. T T Tinder. Tinder. Tinder, yeah. Tinder, yeah. Fucking hell, that's, that's you and me. See, we we're under the thumb, see. This is, this is why we don't know. <laughs> Tinder, I Tizer has a laugh about it because he's like constantly having photos being sent to him of people that are looking for Yeah. <laughs> Big up ties all day. Oh, um, man. Yeah, man, it's, it's true. No, Body it's language, real. vibe, it's energy. These, um, graph holds so many keys to... Uh, um, and, and ones that often they deny. They don't want these, these demons to come out of, of, of an art form and, and actually be celebrated. Well, what they want to do, actually, is tell you how the art form should be. Mm. Well, hang on a minute. If somebody just stoned a fat cap just over your, your brand new facade, I'm sorry, but I can't, I can't say that... I can't tell that geezer to not do that. That's him expressing himself, right? I would do things in a different way because I'm in a slightly different position, yeah? But I love to see the movement of that fat cap. I love to see how that paint moves across that surface because it's a communication and the writing is always on the wall and that's something... In fact... Shout out to Killer Keller for this book. Uh, I've got a book coming soon. It's called Are You Ready for Brazil? Te Preparado Pro Brasil. And it's it actually the, um, the energy behind it or the message behind it is about the writing on the wall because going to Brazil and seeing the incredible artwork. Shout out to Marcelo Mench. Shout out to Marcelo Echo. Shout out to uh, all the, the beasts out there, Philippe Talu, mm. you know what I mean? Shout out to them geezers from Rio, monsters um, um, that are still killing the game, killing it, yeah. murdering the Dangerous game out there. Levels of Savagery, yeah. you know what I mean? That thing that blew my mind in 2014 mm. that made me go, oh, what? Do I have to go back to the beginning? Bro, bro, <laughs> makes you think, don't it? Man, but it just showed me that graffiti, there's no, there's, there's no bounds. So when you see that fat cap, like I said earlier, when you see that fat cap go across that surface, you know, all the way to you see a crisp painting, that maybe gent, shout out to 48, may, you know, you see a crisp painting or you see a quarter, of course, or a zuki, or you see a, you see a tempo, you see an epic, mm. right? You, shout out to them geezers, them monsters. When you see those, those different developments of style, you know that this essence, the essence of this is mm. uh, limitless. Mm. Because all those geezers are connected to source. And when you're connected to source energy, anything can be created. Anything is possible. You said source energy. It's like, it's like you plug in. It's like your core skill, your whole being, creative output, that it starts from that source. It has to. If it, so, you know, the whole concept of meditation is about being connected to source. Hmm. So we're in a constant state of meditation. As creatives? As creatives. For sure. Yeah, because you, you are constantly plugged in. Why? Because the last time you did something, you were at source. So to, to, to start again, you have to go back to source. That's the realest talk. That is the realest talk. <laughs> Bruv, trust me, that's exactly what it is. And the moment I found that out, or the moment I just, I was like, whoa, that's what it is. When you're at source, yeah, you never leave it. Mm. If you're that if you're that way inclined and you're a person that's passionate about being creative, there's a wheel that is spinning at speed mm. within that source point. And every time you get on that wheel, it takes you to a new experience. Oh my god, that's so sick. You know what I'm saying? My mind's fucking blown. <laughs> Trust me. And when I when I felt that, I was like, oh my god, that is the realest stuff I've ever felt in my life. Bonkers, wow. You know what I mean? Because I had to say to myself, well, where does it come from? Mm. You know, and people talk about, oh, you know, there's, a, there's an infinite uh, creative pool that people can connect to. And I was like, yeah, so hang on a minute. So what does that mean then? You know, so I had a little mm. think about that. Mm -hmm. But really what they were talking about is you are connected to source energy. 
And when you're connected to source energy, and you and you really are plugged in, and and you know you're moving in that direction, wherever that direction is taking you creatively, there's no bounds. Steam T U said, um, "Big shout out, Untouchables." Um, shout out. He would go to a wall or a train back in the day, and he wouldn't have a sketch ready. He would literally look, go to the the wall or wherever he's painting, look at it, and visualize it. Is that the kind of thing you mean? Yeah. I mean, that's part of it. Because um, what happens when you're hungry to be creative is that you, you try and cut the distance between you being ex- able to express that creativity and preparing for it. It's like freestyling. So, you, so you're talking about the headspace, that you, because a, there is a preparation in headspace, isn't there? I often challenge myself sometimes when I'm really busy doing some like admin shit or working or having to edit something and I've got to be in a creative space, I sometimes time myself. How long does it take for me to get into that, on that creative wheel that you talk about? Yeah. I think my average is about seven minutes just to kind of warm into it. Yeah. I mean, I know that differs for everyone else, but it's, it exists. It certainly exists. And that's the meditation I was talking about. Because once you plug in like that, you're, all, you're, you're now, you're going down a rabbit hole. It's the best in the world ever. <laughs> You're going down the rabbit hole, but, B. But, okay, so from an MC point of view, that's a very natural transition. However, in the marking of a graffiti writer, which you have surpassed, what, what, because there's a lot of factors here. There is a meditational Zen level, which you, you approach things on, whether it's coming without a sketch and painting yeah. automatically. But there's other contributing factors. There's the risk assessment. There's the paranoia. There's the anxiety. There's the I'm in an illegal place. I'm in a and I'm going to submit something. I've then got to go and hide somewhere until the next morning before I can see it. All of that does play into. I mean that. That's fuel. It's fuel. That's fuel. Doesn't because people a lot of people would say, well, that's not. There's not a lot of meditation going on there. <laughs> no, you see, but, but that's when that's when people do. You know, they'll do a repetitive thing, something that they know. So they don't have to really worry too much about creating something. They might do something with a flair and, and they might do part of that, but there'll be a sort of blueprint idea. Okay. It'll be a throw up, something that they know, something that they've re- rehearsed, something they're familiar that they, with. they're familiar with, it, you mm. know what I mean? Um, and that repetition creates the meditation mindset? Yeah, well, the, repeti- the repetition uh, just, makes you, just makes you better at what you're doing, really. Okay. The, the mindset thing is, to, is really to do with um, you know, when, when you're when you want when you want to do something creative, and you want to push the envelope, that's when you that's when you start to think about doing things differently. Because what happens is, and I find this it's the same thing with hip hop music. You pull all these ideas, all these uh, elements of ideas. You know, it might be a word, might be one word that connects to another word, which is completely not related in any way, shape or form, in anybody else's book, but you've seen the connection between the two, yeah? So, the, that mindset is what I, I bring that to graffiti too. It could be just an arrow in a slightly different direction. It could be, it could be that I've put um, some bandages on the, on the letter, you know what I mean, um, between two letters to link them together, mm-hmm. like, you know, there's some damage, or it, it could be anything. It could be drips, it mm-hmm. could be you know, splats, it could be stars, it could be a character peeking over the letters, whatever, you know, mm. it's, it's, it's anything, it's anything that you want to do really, you know, um, and, and some of the geezers that are really plugged in, really plugged in, you, you see it in every painting, you know what I mean? Yeah. You see it in every painting. You it's do, ju- don't you? It's just like geezers that are on the mic. Yeah. Every track, when you hear that track, there's a new progression, it could be minuscule, but it's enough to push them over that, that hump. You know who that. does that in a, in a, from a hip-hop point of view in music? Dilla was the king of that shit. The little tiniest thing that you would dis- be dece- deceived in thinking was a mistake was actually a challenge of his own and him just, just testing yeah. because he was so confident in what he was doing. Those happy... Yo, that's... Happy mistakes. For, for me, that's, 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 almost a Bob, that's almost a Bob Ross line. Happy, oh, the, you know, those happy accidents. <laughs> That's a Bob Ross flavour. Yeah, right? Trust me, Dilla. <laughs> yeah. 
That's Shout right. out to the, the, the Yancey Foundation. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Dilla Dog. Shout out to Madlib. Shout out to yeah. all the beasts out all there. All that, all music. that. Um, for me, um, Dilla, Dilla... I might just simplicity. add as well, Evidence, Alchemist, all the guys, I mean, you know. Oh, shout out to the Rizzo, man. Shout out to Pre- yeah. Yeah, for real, whoa, Primo. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Shout out to Kazal Organism whoa, right whoa, there. Whoa. <laughs> Trust Whoop. me. There's a reason why this is on the table. Oh, Ooh. man. <laughs> shout out to the, the, the big boys out there. Shout out to Josie Wells. Mm. You know what I mean? Uh, right, right out there in, uh, in, in LA. Shout out to Mellow Man Ace. Mm. Kazal's Pops. Shout out to Hip Hop, man. You know what I mean? Mm. In general. Big up Dr. Dre. Mm. <laughs> yeah, for yeah. real. I feel, he's under, I feel he's underestimated. I feel he's understated. I don't think he's... He's he's onto some potential there. He's just keep up with what you're doing, Dre. You know what I mean? I think I, I think I think he's got some flavour. Yeah, you know what I mean? He's, he's, got, he's, he's in the building. Got potential there, lad. Yeah, they all hold a level of confidence that um, is it's an energy, and it's bigger than that. You can see when they're doing little tricks to to test themselves as well as the listener. Yeah, and they're not mistakes. Yeah, do you know what I'm saying? I think that's the great thing about alchem. You know, you mentioned the alchemists. You know, man, shout out. Mm. Alchemist, the beast himself. Um, it's alchemy. Mm. So when you take uh, two unrelated elements and create precious metal from it, or a, a, a precious substance from it, that's alchemy. Oh God, this is this is so sick. That's exactly <laughs> what it is, man. It's alchemy, and I tell you, uh, when thoughts collide in your mind because now you're translating information from the source because this is what happens when you're translating information from the source you try to express it creatively or vocally mm-hmm. and it's, that's all it is you are translating what's going on out there in the source and uh, people talk about this a lot they talk about I mean Michael Jackson and Prince and them guys back in the 80s they swore blind that you know they were just the conduits you know the, the, this thing was being Feel it was coming from nowhere into them and out the other side. Quincy Jones as well would, would be testified to that every time. It's like we don't know what happened. Yeah, we got the coordinates. There's notes and the pad, but nah, this is all. Um, this is the great. Think? This is the great thing about creativity, because it's limitless. And one of the things that I would say modern society is trying to stifle is the con- is the is the conversation of creativity. Yeah. It's trying to say that, um, you know, only a few people can be creative yeah. and the creativity has to be this way. Which isn't true in the slightest. It's bullshit. When you put a fucking fat cap spray all across the front of a Lamborghini, that's creative. That's crazy creative. That's the most creative you're going to get. That Lamborghini looks dope now. You yeah. know what I mean? It's, you know, there's it's something... Got story to it. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's, it's got flavour. Generic shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you're not just the same sunbeam yellow. You yeah. know what I mean? Or, Whatever it is now. Not that I would advocate anyone spraying on a Lamborghini. Try a Ferrari first. Let's go for a Ferrari yeah, first. F- you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Go Diablo first, for especially real. old school ones. And blindfold yourself too. You know what I mean? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Let's do that. Yeah. So I, I also love the surprise of uh, the own, and the unpredictability of creativity. Mm. Because you, you're in a labor, you're in the laboratory. Yeah. And then you you throw some some chemical elements together which are actually in your brain mm. and when you throw those chemical elements together they create a spark and that spark gives way to movement and you try to read that movement or that message or you know those directions yeah. and when you follow those directions and like i said it takes you down that rabbit hole you don't know where you can be baby that's the best <laughs> sometimes i don't want to come back yeah. Sometimes when you come back, and I'm, I'm pretty sure it, it's the same with graph missions as it is for being in a studio for eight hours, as it is for performing live. The um, endorphins, the the, the, ch- the chase that you've just partook in, and the feeling of um, complete wholeness. Yeah. There's nothing better than that feeling. I challenge anybody, I challenge anybody, yeah, to... To, to deny that you know yeah. what I mean because yeah. when you when you do something of self which is of merit to yourself which appeases you teaches you and shows you a 360 degree version of yourself I defy you I defy anyone to say that's a worthless experience yo to see oneself yeah to see oneself in 5D yeah 
uh, in motion, creating something that is incredible. And out of body, you're seeing yourself. You are seeing feeling. yourself outside of yourself. Like you're the persona that you, you're Sasha Fierce, essentially. And you can control that Sasha Fierce. I think that's why people love Graf so much. It's, it, it's, it's, um, it's becoming lined, it's becoming, uh, I'm saying lined, it's becoming aligned mm. with your mental projection of self. For real. <gasps> you know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's not what you think you are. Um, it's actually what you really are. What is that? What do other people see as? So your mental projection of self is going to be uh, variable. Mm. depending on who's looking at you from what perspective oh my god that's so true it's oh man yeah that's real true because everybody's coming at you with different opinions of yourself but their story is the it's like the tattoo on you so they see you in a different light but what's your oh center? we're getting real deep on this one this is so sick yeah oh for real man what's your center point mm. you know and and the thing is um i think um the young people of today are so creative. Super They're, creative. The creativity is so, it, it feels so boundless, so limitless. Because the technology as well, it's just allowed for It's freedom. so crazy, yeah. It's so crazy. I've seen some leaps and bounds in thought that I'm like, wow, you know what I mean? This is brilliant. You know, I love, you know, this is liberating because it's saying that there's still hope. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm right. saying? That's what it said. There's, you know, it's saying that we, you know, we're not, we're not going to be silenced. No, and just going back to the music thing, the the, the gutter rap scene. Well, yeah. that's the New York, the new New York scene. That took a has taken a total turn of like, wow, the it's back. New York is, back. Hey everyone, New York's just jumped, just just stepped in the fucking room. New York's back, Grisella. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Yeah, yo, oh New my York. God, <laughs> you know what I mean the griminess. But then, you know, okay, look, as a big fan of Common his uh, Black America Again album, considering the amount of music he's put out before, for him to come... Shout out to Rakim in the background right yeah, there. Yeah, there we go. Um, like, I hope you can hear all this music. Well, I hope you can't hear too so. much of it, or the, the copyright claims will be going left, <laughs> right, centre on this episode. But, <laughs> but yeah, we're, we're we, vibing we on no Friday. Right, we have no rights to this. We're outside, we mind our own business. Yeah, exactly. Um, um, I, think this, I think the song is called Black America Again. Um, yeah, it's, I think it's called that. I think that's the, it's the title track of the album. Anyway, the intensity that he was still able to bring showed me that geezers like Carmen still ain't left the source. Mm, mm, mm. The source is still very prevalent mm. in his psyche, regardless of whether he's, you know, he's, he's making films and whatever, like Cool J and other geezers. Mm, mm. But to be in the industry for a period of time... And hold that. He said, true. actually, he, he, Carmen actually says in that song, he goes, the, the industry will make you lose intensity. You know, it's oh, I mean, true. Right? So you know, when you think about, I, I think about those geezers simply for the fact that I believe they're up up against a lot more elements and of a lot more trying things. Trying not to make you be that that yeah. that pro black, that yeah. too thoughtful. You don't want to think too deep. Yeah. You don't want the you don't want to taint the the the, um, the general public with with too much opinion when they're um, they're putting the opinions on. They're, su they're suppressing people with their right, own agendas right. and opinions. Exactly. You know, um, if you're trying to, if you, whenever you're trying to wake anybody up, you're always going to get opposition. Yeah. That's just the reality. You know what I mean? And for whatever reasons, those things are in place in people's lives or mm. life in general or society. I don't know. I can't explain it, but I'm just saying there seems to be a pattern. Whenever that happens, mm. people go away or things just don't make it to the light or yeah. whatever it is. So, you know, um, I'm on the Underground Railroad, man. That's where I've been. You know, I'm still a passenger. I'm still, I'm still picking up passengers too. You know what I mean? Because sometimes I drive that train. Mm. Um, and I really feel like um, everybody needs to own their own Underground Railroad train. I'm kind of feeling <laughs> what you're saying there um, because I think for the majority of people... Because I might add, this is the second time of us doing this. We had some technical issues before. Uh, I shout, had about, out to, shout out to the technical issues. Yeah, the technical, hold tight the technical issues crew. <laughs> T-I-C T, T, crew. Um, but then, then there was a 
cool. I had at least three or four people hit me up on DM saying, when's the T-Bone podcast coming? I'm like, oh, fuck, man, fuck. <laughs> but shout, out to the, shout out to those people. For, for real, though. Like, for real. like, And I think it's, 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 this is a better version of the podcast simply because I feel like you're talking to the people that know you um, as being that train driver, the, the journeyman, the creative funnel of uh, of ideas and i think a lot of them don't want that ever to leave you yeah i think the conversation we had before was a lot more retrospective and but we're talking now uh, for me is a, a, a much more welcomed conversation yeah. uh, of 2021 which is one of positive um, not that the other one wasn't but had it, this has got like a charge to it that says that you ain't going nowhere and i think a lot for of people are, uh, will massively appreciate that no for real man um you know, I think about this every day, um, and I think about I think about the opportunity mm. and the blessing mm. of still being able to be uh, myself uh, expressly, mm. exclusively, and without uh, you know, without any without any excuses, without any um, what's the word I'm looking for, without any apologies. Yeah, you know, I'm unapologetically me. Mm. Um, I'm that way because I believe that if, you, if you're not your authentic version of yourself, then you're going to struggle and you're going to feel uh, congested and you're going to feel like something's been taken away and you're, gonna, and, and you're not going to be able to develop going mm. forward. If you can't be your authentic self, how are you going to know what your limitations are? Yeah. How are you going to know what... Is that an age thing, though? Because as you do, as we do, and big shout out to the young... Younger crew out there, because uh, you know this is some. Peace knowledge. out to the youngers, man. Bring up, bring it up the right way. Mm. You know, what I mean, listen to the olders, because there shouldn't be a disparity. There shouldn't be at all. No, a gap between you and us. Ever. You know, what I'm saying, don't and, let anybody yeah. tell you any different either. Hundred percent. And the quicker you know this, the quicker that you get to this place where you want to be in your career and where you want to be creatively. Because um, as as I've got older, for sure, I'm way more happy with a with the position I'm in creatively and otherwise but furthermore I've realised that everything that I was doing up until this point you can galvanise them all and put them all into one thing and then you all of a sudden it becomes your whole in entirety yeah. rather than being so focused on one little thing and, a, and again just going back to the graph and the music and all the things that you, you you've, you're cultivating yeah. it, it feels that, that you're in the same sort of position yeah man they they all speak to each other, but I realise they still have to feed and water them. Mm. So, excuse me, I, I used to think, boy, um, my mum used to say actually a long time ago, she used to say, um, you know, if you, don't, if you don't use what God has given you, because it don't belong to you anyway, if you don't use it, it'll be taken away from you. And I used to worry about that. I used to think, rah, if I don't keep painting, if I, can't, if I don't keep doing this, if I don't keep doing that, you know, you're going to lose it. But I, I think there's wisdom in that. It just means that you can cultivate anything and it will continue to grow. You just need to feed it a little bit every single day. Even if it's a thought, you feed it with a thought. You feed it with, a, you, you, you feed it with an action. You feed it with, you know, uh, advice. You feed it with um, retrospect. You know, whatever you feed it with, yeah, it gives you an, another opportunity for that thing to expand because whenever you look at something again it's not what it was before when you first viewed it the version is either smaller because you've encompassed it or it's still big and you have to be like well hang on a minute how do I get my head around that mm -hmm. and whenever you clock a thing that's when you be then that's when it becomes manageable in your mind and that's when it becomes something that you uh, can then progress from so it's like, when you, it's like when I first saw, you know, like a, the whole side of a building painted. I was like, oh my God, that's crazy. You know, how did them geezers do it? And the next time you've seen it, you know, we, we've got some visitors, but shout out to 48 right there. <laughs> yeah, <fine. laughs> um, yeah, the first time I saw it, I was like, wow, how is that possible? You know, but then everything has a process and as I said I said this to my children shout out to my children I love yeah, you all right I said to them look everything has a process everything has a process you just have to learn what the process is 
and afford yourself the time to learn. And when you get to that point um, you, and you manage it, you can become excellent. Mm. You can move that point around in whatever direction you want. Mm. And then that point it simply does what you want it to do. It's crazy. And on that note, I think <laughs> my final thought, Jesus Christ, I mean, these lot are going to be late. It's only, what time is it now? It must be only like nine o'clock your time. Oh, it's man. Blowing their mind. Um, Let's do it, man. What's the future hold? Oh, the, the future is beautiful. Um, all depending on your perspective. Um, shout out to World of Wills. I'm going on to that on Monday. Uh, well, next week, you know what I mean? Um, give that'll, be, that'll be a few weeks ago to you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to uh, the book coming at some point soon. Um, are you ready for Brazil? Shout out to my man Van Lander over there in Rio de Janeiro who did the artwork for the book. Wow. Um, shout out to the music projects coming. Yeah, I know. That's what I was oh, going to say. Man. I mean, you've just been playing some gems. And you played me man. some more beforehand as well when we were there last time. Oh, no doubt, man. I'm I mean, going to give I'm you some more hanging joints. out with you, boy. Oh, no uh, doubt, man. I'm going to play. But shout out to uh, the Crystal Oak Desk Camp that's coming. That's between me and uh, Mighty Oak. Uh, shout out to... Uh, the Crystal Lotus project that's between me and myself, me, me and myself, me and Jay Hoon out there in China. Shout out to Jay Hoon. Wow. Uh, shout out to the one and a half kilogram universe that's between uh, myself and Joe again. Shout out to the Untitled project between me and Rav mm -hmm. that's coming. Um, produced by um, Tone Jones. Shout out to Tone Jones, the beast. Um, there's a lot of music, man, wow. uh, and it's beautiful. Shout out to the Man Kazar organism. Um, shout out to Josie Wells, like I said beforehand, you know, um, shout out to the man killer Keller <laughs> for allowing me a second chance. Hey. hey, some people don't get a second chance, you know. Yeah, oh, man, <laughs> my guy, my guy, always, always. It's all love, man. Gentlemen. It's all love, man. This is a beautiful day. Yeah, it's You gorgeous. know, um, I really feel uh, encompassed by... Uh, consideration and love you know what I mean so and that's why that's that's what the future holds that's what I'm talking that's about that's what the future holds anything that you do uh, do it with love mm. you know what I mean do it with forethought do it with consideration uh, and be your best version of you you know that's what the future should hold um, educate yourself and liberate yourself uh, you know be good be kind to yourself too you know what I mean there's a lot of stress out here at the moment there's a lot of uncertainty out here at the moment be kind to yourself be responsible you know and and great things are going to happen in fact collectively great things are going to happen anyway mm. i have no doubt there you know um and like odb said i never put doubt in my mind because mm. when i know when i touch the mic there's the rhyme <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh. for real man shout out to wu-tang clan yeah. shout out to uh everybody that's been tuning into the killer killer podcast mm. please don't uh, uh, give up on this brother right here because he's doing great things. Always support him, you know what I mean? Because he's taking his time, his energy, and he's putting love back into the hip hop culture, which is feeding and nurturing us for generations to come. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's what we're doing, man. You know, we're forwarding, and it's about forward movement. That's what we love. You know what I mean? Love is forward movement. So, yo, bring that. Yeah, don't come on no weak thing. You know what I mean? Because man <laughs> will shut you down. Killer Keller will shut you down, blood. <laughs> for real shout out my crew FKS NHS all day you know what I mean and, um, shout out to uh, the big the big DDS boys right mm. there mm. you know shout out to to all the the grimy crimey grimy cats down there lurking in the lurky spots you know don't what know mean? what you mean I don't know any I don't of them know, nah. I don't know any of them geezers I, but I, I, I just heard something about <laughs> it yeah shout out to, to all those all those uh, people creating beauty creating art creating uh, life mm. and energy and uh, I'm going on too long here but you know what I'm just so glad to be here yeah. you know what I'm saying so like I did, said one more time shout out to the Killer Keller My guy. podcast right there. Bone in the what, house. I don't even know what year it is but yo <laughs> <laughs> hey we're infinite we're infinite we're over infinite here. man we don't deal with no time scales yeah. whenever you guys check this wherever you are thank you for joining, tuning in and joining us big shout out to the mighty T-Bone inside the place Graph original MC disciplinarian. Way! Oh man. We are out oh, like that. Oh, that was oh. fashion. Come on. Peace. Killer Killer Podcast, you know what to do. Sharing is caring. Subscribe. Do not sleep on it, people. You know what to do. Don't talk to anyone I wouldn't. Stay lucky. Shout out. Peace. Peace. Oh, now that is how you do it, baby. <laughs>